Smell you later 2018! Even though it'll be really hard to top some of the movies released this year, like Into the Spider-Verse, Black Panther, and Infinity War, I'm really excited for so many things in 2019! Grab your calendars, board the hype train, and let out your nerdiest battle cry. Cowabunga, dude. <laughs> I'm Chris Carr. <laughs> and I'm Winnie Van Lanningham! These are the top shows and movies to look forward to in 2019. And, and this, this is NerdWire! Nerd Justice Outsiders will come out January 4th on DC Universe. The long-awaited third season will focus on meta-trafficking in Markovia. We'll see the original team we know and love, as well as some new faces. Obviously, Artemis will be grappling with the loss of Wally, but I'm hoping in true Flash fashion that our boy is simply lost to the Speed Force and not permadead. It's DC. Does anyone ever really die? <laughs> Rounding out M. Night's superhero trilogy is the film Glass, which brings back Bruce Willis's superpowered David Dunn and James McAvoy's multi-personalityed Kevin Wendell Crumb. The two men are held in a psych ward where Samuel L. Jackson's Mr. Glass definitely has something super evil and sinister planned for the Beast and his hero of choice. Now, Unbreakable is one of my favorite Shyamalan flicks, and I can't wait for this final installment hitting us January 18th. Where in the world is Carmen Sandiego? Turns out you don't need to be a globetrotting criminal to find her. The new reboot of Carmen Sandiego is premiering on Netflix on January 18th. I'm really excited to dive deeper into Carmen's backstory. We're finally gonna find out who in the world she is. Answering all those plot holes in Lego Movie, we've got Lego Movie 2 coming to the screen February 8th. I'll take whatever gets me more sweet, sweet Lonely Island songs. The Lego Movie 2, the second part, takes place five years after the first film, where our heroes encounter a new threat, Lego Duplo. Invaders from outer space who wreck things faster than our favorite little figurines can rebuild them. Get ready for Chris Pratt and Chris Pratt. I think the writers were just like, I bet we can make a whole movie based around that raptor meme. Uh, Chris, do you want some more money? <laughs> Coming to theaters February 14th is Alita Battle Angel, featuring photorealistic anime eyes that have already proven to be super polarizing with viewers. As a manga fan, I gotta say I'm pretty stoked with the choice. Alita is discovered by one Dr. Ido while searching for stray cyborg bits. Alita doesn't know who she is, where she came from, but Dr. Ido has a feeling of what her true purpose is and works to shield her from her lethal design. So it's that classical story of self-discovery for a robot. <laughs> Producer James Cameron confirmed that this first installment will be a combination of the first four books in Yukito Kishiro's series of manga books, and if the film is successful, he hopes to make an additional two Battle Angel films. Based on My Chemical Romance's frontman Gerard Way's award-winning comic, The Umbrella Academy will hit Netflix February 15th. In 1989, 43 children are born unto women who at the start of that fateful day weren't pregnant. Six of these kids are adopted together and form the Umbrella Academy. After their adoptive dad dies, these super kids reunite to save the world. DC Universe will premiere their live action Doom Patrol. The series will be set after the events of Titans and the Doom Patrol team will consist of Robot Man, Negative Man, Crazy Jane, and Elasta Woman. How to Train Your Dragon, the hidden world finally gives us what we've all wanted the whole time, Night Fury on Light Fury action. This third How to Train Your Dragon film follows the dragon's courtship, Hiccup being tested as chief leader, and as always, saving them dragons. At some point in early 2019, Disney's new animated adventure series Amphibia will air. It's about a stuck up brat from the city who gets transported to a magical land inhabited by frogs. Sounds like it's gonna be another cutesy Disney series about why you should be more easygoing and less spoiled, but it's from the storyboard artist of Gravity Falls, so I have hope for it. All right, this next one I am super psyched for because I love everything LaShawn Thomas is involved with. Did you check out Children of Ether? Oh, I really have high hopes for Cannon Busters. This Netflix anime will be dropping March 1st and takes us to the land of Gearbolt. A ragtag group of travelers on this journey includes robots, fugitives, and a skilled swordsman. I don't need to know anything else about the show. I'm gonna binge it so hard. Call her beeper when you wanna reach her. The Kim Possible live action movie premieres on March 1st on the Disney Channel. Wait a minute. Do you think they're gonna update the theme song now that beepers don't really exist anymore? Call me, Snapchat me if you wanna reach me. TikTok, Vine, I don't know what teenage crime fighters are using to communicate these days. I don't know. The story looks pretty true to the original, and personally, I'm most excited to see Shigo in action. Cartoon Shigo was my sexual awakening in sixth grade. On March 5th, Captain Marvel is crashing into a blockbuster video, or theater, near you. I wonder what other 90s things they'll throw up Brie Larson to fight back against. Jinko jeans, stretchy chokers, Kurt Cobain? I don't know, but it looks like she punches an old lady in the trailer, so I can't wait to see what that's all about. I've got two words for you. Danny DeVito. This live action Tim Burton remake starring Colin Farrell and Michael Keaton looks like it's gonna be a tearjerker. Except for the part where they got rid of all the racist crows. I feel like that was an especially good call. Winter is coming in April. Game of Thrones final season will air this spring. Who will sit on the Iron Throne? Or is everybody just gonna die? Netflix is really delivering on anime, you guys. In April, we'll get seven seeds. 
According to Netflix's site, the story will follow Natsu, a woman who is awoken in a post-apocalyptic world after being cryogenically frozen as part of a program to ensure the survival of humanity. I hadn't heard about this manga before, and you can bet your sweet biffy I will definitely be reading this in preparation for the series. The satirical anime series One Punch Man returns in April with more punches and tiered hero bureaucracy. Fun fact! This was the show that I auditioned with when I was applying to be a Nerdwire host. So that tells you how freaking long it's been to get these new episodes. Aw, baby host Chris, you were so young and full of hope, but at least you kind of have better hair now? April 1st, Netflix will give streamers a new take on the Japanese classic Ultraman. The original 1966 version was essentially a giant man type dude who could get big and battle kaiju. And that sort of cheesy monster of the week schniz is exactly what I live for. The Chilling Adventures of Sabrina is back pretty quickly considering it first aired in October of 2018. Obviously, we are not complaining. We'll take an occult comic series year-round, please. Season 2 should answer some questions left hanging at the end of the first season and holiday special. Does Sabrina have an evil twin? Will she ever hook up with Nick Scratch? Is Father Blackwood going to find out that Anzetta stole his baby? April 5th can't come fast enough. I'm pretty sure movie studios are just remaking every Stephen King movie now because a remake of Pet Cemetery is coming out. I'm on the fence about this one, but if it's as good as it, I'll dig it. A UFO crash lands near Mossy Bottom Farm, and Sean the Sheep has to help this visitor from space evade a sinister organization out to catch the space gal on April 5th. Sheep and aliens, what could be more natural? Now also on April 5th, DC is finally leaning into kitsch and whimsy and gives us Shazam! I was honestly worried about them delivering a dark and gritty take on this, and that simply would not work. It's big with superpowers! It's literally every nerdy kid's dream! Hopper is Hellboy! What else do you need to know? Your favorite dad bod sheriff is playing everyone's favorite government-employed demon, working to stop an ancient medieval sorceress from destroying all mankind on April 12th. All right, all I know about this show is that it's about stuffed bears who like to eat fancy bento boxes. So it'll be great if you're under the age of five, love cuddly things, or perma-stoned. Catch it on Netflix starting April 19th. I wanna be your end game. Don't wanna keep the Hulk tame. I wanna be your A-team. I wanna be your end game, your end game. Avengers 4 already has a pretty big reputation, and I'm pretty sure the entire world has been holding their breath since Spidey turned into a cloud of dust in Infinity War. This will be a more anticipated part two than Deathly Hallows and Twilight combined. The Avengers will break the box office once more on April 26th. Alan Moore's Swamp Thing is coming to the small screen this year, so get ready for some amazing storytelling and inevitably some weird porn popping up when you don't use safe search. Internet, y'all are freaky. Swamp Thing streams May 2019. Solving Mysteries just got 100% more adorable. I can't tell if I want to snuggle Ryan Reynolds as Detective Pikachu or feed him a chimichanga, but either way, this movie looks ridiculous and I'm hyped. Okay, so next up we have John Wick 3. Okay, but hang on. Hear me out. Here's the plot. John Wick 1. Guys kill his dog. He kills the guys back. John Wick 2. They let his dog live, but there's a billion bad guys hunting him down. John Wick 3. John adopts a pet ferret, and the bad guys kill his ferret, too. John and his pit bull have to avenge the ferret's death. Kevin James stars as the voice of the ferret. Oh, Whitney, that's not what John Wick 3 is about. In the sequel, John is banned from the Continental after killing a member of the High Table, and he has to fight his way out of New York to survive. My ferret plot was way better. It sure was, bud. Disney live action remakes are the new hot thing, so this time we're getting a CGI-filled Aladdin on May 24th. I'm not sure that they can ever replace Robin Williams as the genie, though. Will Smith is fine, but I ain't never had a friend like the original. Yeah, it's got a killer cast, but Godzilla, King of the Monsters, is setting up to be a monsterverse filled with kaiju that may involve Mothra and Rodan teaming up. These titans can devour Eleven like she's an ego for all I care. I want some epic kaiju fights! Godzilla stomps into theaters May 31st. It'll be weird having Stranger Things come out in the summer for the first time after its initial two seasons October releases, but the sooner I can hang out with the boys on bikes from Hawkins, Indiana, the better. All we know for sure about season three is that there's more dark secrets brewing in the town, and that babysitter Steve got a mall job scooping ice cream. Don't give out too many free samples, dude. That's how I got fired from Hagen dazs All right, honestly, this is something I am not hyped for because I despise Jean Grey. Okay, maybe June 7th's Dark Phoenix will change my mind. This movie has been pushed back a ton, which doesn't bode well, but you can't judge a constantly dying X-Men by their post-production sketch. The Dark Phoenix Saga is one of the most prolific comic arcs in all of graphic noveldom, so if the filmmakers get this one right, it's gonna be a damn good movie. What was the Men in Black franchise missing? Thor and Valkyrie, duh! June 14th, MIB is going international. Wait, shouldn't the Men in Black have always been an international interstellar organization? 
Whatever. If the H in Agent H doesn't stand for hammer, I'm not sure what they're doing. June 14th, we'll see John Shaft Jr. teaming up with his estranged dad to uncover the truth of his friend's mysterious death. We're getting three generations of Shaft and Son of Shaft. Are they all the man? Samuel L. Jackson and Richard Roundtree will be back playing their respective shafts. This synopsis just feels like one big dick joke at this point. What's Andy gonna be doing in Toy Story 4? Wrapping up his quarter-life crisis? Dodging calls from student loan officers? Disappointing his mother by moving back in with her to save on rent? Honestly, the teaser trailer didn't really have enough information in it to take a real guess at the plot, but I'm excited to see Woody and Buzz back in action again on June 21st. Spidey is going to web sling his way from New York to London and all over Europe on July 5th in Spider-Man Far From Home. Peter Parker might need his passport to travel the globe, but he doesn't need a passport to get into my heart. <laughs> As a third Disney live action remake coming out this year, Lion King is probably one of the more anticipated. We'll get to see the updated Pride Rock on July 19th, but if they don't make Uncle Scar a gay icon again, I'm gonna lose it! On July 26th, Sony Animation will be releasing their film Wish Dragon, an animated spin on the old genie in a bottle tale. A young boy encounters a mystical wish-granting dragon and navigates the moral challenges that come with making wishes. Jackie Chan's company Sparkle Roll Media is producing, and Chan will be voicing both the English and Chinese versions of the film. New Mutants is an X-Men horror movie, and I am very upset because I feel like Whitney has tricked someone into making a scary movie that I absolutely have to go see. Ugh. In the movie, five teenage mutants, who are just discovering their powers, are held in a secret facility against their will and have to fight to escape. Now for casual movie-based X-Men fans, you're gonna be introduced to a lot new faces and powers. Now the spin on the genre could be really cool, but I'm gonna still watch this from behind my hands on August 2nd, and I'm gonna force you to tell me when all the scary bits are over. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Sometime between late August and November, we'll see the ever-expanding DC Universe's lineup add another hero to their roster, Stargirl. Stargirl follows a high school sophomore, Courtney Whitmore, who inspires an unlikely group of young heroes to stop villains of the past. So, DC Legends of Tomorrow, but with teens? The show is said to reimagine Stargirl and the very first superhero team, the Justice Society of America, in a new and exciting way. Here's hoping. Artemis Fowl will make the jump from page to silver screen August 9th. My brother Hayden loved these books as a kid, which should have been a red flag, Mom. Books about a 12-year-old genius from a line of criminal masterminds? Hmm. With Disney at the helm, I'm interested to see how they blend fantasy, sci-fi, ransoms, and the Russian mob. It Part 2 is coming out next September 6th, which gives me approximately nine months to convince Chris to watch It Part 1 with me. It's not even scary! It's like a really long episode of Stranger Things, but with murder clowns! The sequel promises to pick up 27 years after the first one left off, with Pennywise the dancing clown back in action to terrorize Derry. If you want your boat back, Georgie, you better go see It Chapter 2. Bill's gonna kill ya. Hold on to your wallets, kids, because the streaming wars are about to get heated. Disney is on track to release their Disney Plus streaming platform by October. In addition to launching with every movie you've loved ever as a child, Disney Plus will come packaged with a few enticing shows to binge. Disney hasn't unveiled just what series we'll see this year yet, but our money is on a low-key miniseries starring Tom Hiddleston, a Monsters, Inc. animated series, and a prequel series to Star Wars Rogue One centered around Diego Luna's Cassian Andor. Disney Plus also has a Scarlet Witch and Vision series, as well as another Star Wars series headed by Jon Favreau that will explore the Mandalorians. We'll be seeing a brand spanking new Harley Quinn cartoon that promises to be brutal, body, and naughty at some point in October on DC Universe. I love Harley, but I am way more excited about Emo Ivy. A Joker origin flick with Joaquin Phoenix drops October 4th, and I think I speak for many when I say, for why? I like my Joker to be an agent of chaos with no rhyme or reason. Don't make me sympathize with the Clown Prince of Crime! At least this won't be another grill-wearing face tat Jared Leto take, but guys, can we stop getting method actors to take this role? Jesus! If you're like me, you couldn't sleep for months after watching the Dollhouse episode of Are You Afraid of the Dark? That being said, I'm so pumped to revisit one of the spookiest shows from my childhood in feature-length form! The film reboot will keep a bunch of elements from the original show. Most importantly, that it's totally healthy and normal to scare the crap out of children with ghost stories. Finally! A show about my pug Pugsley Adams! Oh man, no, I'm, I'm sorry, but it's a cartoon remake of the original show. At least Finn Wolfhard from It and Stranger Things will be voicing Pugsley. The only thing I'm a little dicey about is that it involves the Adams family getting involved with a reality TV show of some kind, and that's not really my thing. Just make it spooky, guys. The Adams Family hits theaters, but will face opening day competition with Zombieland 2. It's been 10 years since the last Zombieland movie, and two years since I made eye contact with Jesse Eisenberg at London Heathrow Airport, so that must mean that it's almost time for Jesse and I to be married! 
Zombie Land 2 will feature all new mutated zombies and even a few new survivors added to their pack. There's not much information out there about the fourth Charlie's Angels film coming out November 1st, but apparently Kristen Stewart's in it, so there's that. But I am excited to see Elizabeth Banks act in a movie she's also directing. Homegirl is a boss bitch. Also on November 1st, we'll be getting a new Terminator. Terminator 6 doesn't even have a title yet, but it does have a confirmed Arnold Schwarzenegger, and that's what really counts. Apparently, it's going to serve as a direct sequel to Terminator 2 Judgment Day and will negate the timeline of all the subsequent Terminator movies and TV shows. God, why couldn't we have done that with the prequels? I am very disappointed, you guys. I thought that the Kingsman sequel would continue to be about the guys and their pugs. But apparently, the third Kingsman will dive deep into the origins of the Kingsman organization in the early 1900s. It sounds cool, but there's no pugs. Mm -hmm. Come for the memes, stay for the movie. A Sonic the Hedgehog Twitter account popped up in December 2018, featuring a pair of freakishly muscular blue legs and a handwritten sign that reads, can a guy work out? Be back next year, heart Sonic. Of course, the internet immediately photoshopped dozens of terrifying and beautiful things atop those legs. Until further notice, all we know is that the movie should be pretty sick. It's got Ben Schwartz, Jim Carrey, and James Marsden as the lead, so hopefully it'll be able to measure up to its voice cast. Sonic races onto the big screen on November 8th. And on November 22nd, Frozen 2 will hit theaters. No, I don't want to do this again. No, it's okay, just breathe. It's not okay, it'll never be okay. They'll keep playing Adina Menzel wherever we go. The Adele Dazeem memes will come back in full force. Disneyland will become unbearable. I can't do this a second time. Dude, it's just a movie, let it go. No, you let it go. Although I'm sad to see Jumanji steer away from the Robin Williams version, I gotta admit, DTRJ is my boy. I cannot wait to write a new drinking game for December 13th, Jumanji 3. Drink every time Kevin Hart almost gets eaten by an animal, and definitely drink if they try to recycle that joke where he explodes if he eats cake. Can't we all just go and rewatch Empire Strikes Back like the good old days? You know, when Carrie Fisher was alive and nobody hated porgs. I personally had a lot of fun watching The Last Jedi, but I know that a lot of you guys didn't. I wanna see where this next Star Wars takes us before we all start judging it. Although, I'm going to cry like an actual baby when I see General Leia on screen. Who knows? <laughs> now let's move on to some other exciting projects that we have no idea when they specifically come out in 2019. The Boys. <laughs> the Boys is the latest comic adaptation from Seth Rogen and Evan Goldberg. They're teaming up with Supernatural's Eric Kripke to bring this story about a squad tasked with keeping supers in line to the screen. This show looks like it's gonna be a bloody good time and will be streaming on Amazon. My boy David Tennant is playing the most approachable Demon Crowley in Good Omens and I am here for it. My favorite actor, in an adaptation of one of my favorite books, hells yes! With writer Neil Gaiman on board, I'm feeling very confident this is going to be another strong adaptation, just like American Gods. Plus, we get John Hamm as an angel, Nick Offerman, and a plot to stop the end of days. What more could you want? Mmm, devilish David Tennant being all bad and no, nobody's saving babies. Mm. Down girl. Hmm? If you haven't seen What We Do in the Shadows yet, I think it's on Amazon Prime right now and you should definitely check it out. Apparently, they're turning the documentary about three vampires who have been roommates for hundreds of years into a TV series. Dark Crystal is one of my favorite movies, and any Muppet-based show is a winner in my book. So I am so hyped for Dark Crystal Age of Resistance. If getting more Gelfling stories wasn't enough, the cast is incredible. Seriously, everyone you love is in the show. Mark Hamill, Keegan-Michael Key, Natalie Dormer, Helena Bottom Carter, Simon Pegg, Andy Samberg, Taryn Egerton. The show is brimming with talent. Created by the regular show, guys? Check. Starring a corgi? Double check. Infinity Train is about exactly what it sounds like. A girl inexplicably trapped on a train trying to get off to go home. Honestly, it sounds kind of like a lot funnier animated Snowpiercer, and I'm excited to see it. Victor and Valentino sounds really cool. It's a Mexican folk-themed cartoon coming to Cartoon Network from the makers of OKKO OK and the new Powerpuff Girls reboot. It's about two brothers and their supernatural grandmother searching for adventure in strange entities. Expect it to just be a little bit spooky. A new animated series called The Owl House will be coming to Disney Channel. This show is a horror comedy about a human girl named Luz who stumbles upon a portal to the demon realm. There, our heroine befriends a witch and the cutest lol skunk cubone hybrid looking warrior named King. With their help, Luz works to become a witch and forms a family of sorts in this unlikely new home. Undone, an animated comedy drama series, follows Ama after she survives a near-fatal car accident and can now manipulate time. What do you do with time travel powers? Solve your dad's death! Duh! It's made by the same folks who gave us BoJack Horseman, so let's hope this is basically just BoJack with time travel. Solving crimes and existential dread, woo! Same old story, Morty's killing Morty's. Our favorite animated series will return at some point in late 2019. God, I'm just dreading the part when all those little a-holes harass Dan Harmon off Twitter again. 
I am, however, looking forward to rewatching seasons one, two, and three. I have never seen them sober. I could not tell you the plot of a single episode. Thundercat's roar looks starkly different from the original. I get wanting to change things up and adding comedic elements, but this is one I'm definitely gonna have to watch and see if it wins me over. The original Thundercats intro itself is animation royalty. Hopefully this will be different, but still familiar and fun. I gotta admit, knowing that Joan and Vasquez hates nostalgia for the sake of nostalgia, I never thought we'd see another Zim story outside of the comics. Luckily, he thought of a way to continue Zim's Urkin mission to destroy Earth, and I am here for all the Hot Topic merch that comes out of it. Did we cover the whole year? Are you still here? Are we dead? That was exhausting. But hey, look at all the stuff we'll get to cover this year. Job security, tight. Now let us know what we missed and what you're looking forward to. Click to the left of our faces for more videos or check us out on Roku and Plex.